Good evening and welcome to this community meeting for the City of Santa Rosa's local road safety plan focusing on Dutton Avenue corridor between West 3rd Street and West College Avenue. I'm Rob Sprinkle, the Deputy Director of Traffic Engineering with the City of Santa Rosa, and I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Live interpretation can be heard on the Spanish channel. You can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon that resembles a globe in the Zoom toolbar on your screen. Before we begin the presentation, our host, Lauren Wiley, with the City of Santa Rosa and our translator, Paloma, will explain how the meeting will work. Buenas noches y bienvenidos a esta reunión comunitaria para el Plan Local de Seguridad Vial de la Ciudad de Santa Rosa, que se enfocará en el corredor de Dutton Avenue entre la calle West 3rd y West. Soy Rob Sprinkle, subdirector de Ingeniería de Tránsito de la Ciudad de Santa Rosa, y quiero agradecerles por acompañarnos esta noche. La interpretación en vivo se puede escuchar en el canal de español para unirse en el canal haciendo clic en el icono de interpretación que parece un globo terráqueo en la barra de herramientas de Zoom en la pantalla. Antes de comenzar la presentación, nuestra anfitriona Lauren Willy con la ciudad de Santa Rosa y su traductora explicarán cómo funcionará la reunión. Thank you, Paloma. As community members join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Your microphone and camera will be muted. Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. Please know the City of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. This meeting is being recorded and will, place, will be placed on the City's website following the meeting. At the end of the presentation, Rob will open up the meeting for public question and comment. A medida que los miembros de la comunidad se unan a la reunión, usted participará como asistente. Su micrófono y su cámara se silenciarán. Solo los panelistas de hoy serán vistos durante la reunión. Tenga en cuenta que la ciudad de Santa Rosa se compromete a crear un entorno seguro e inclusivo libre de interrupciones. No tolar, toleraremos ningún discurso o acción de odio y controlaremos que todos participen respetuosamente o serán eliminados. Si es necesario, también finalizaremos inmediatamente la reunión. Esta reunión se está grabando y se colocará en el sitio web de la ciudad después de la reunión. Al final de la reunión o de la presentación, Rob abrirá la reunión para preguntas y comentarios del público. Gracias. Thank you, Lauren. Once again, I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. Your participation and input are important to us as we discuss the best practices for improving the safety of our city roadways for all users. Uh, we'll start tonight's meeting with a overview of the agenda and the topics we plan to cover in the presentation. Um, first, we'll go over the project description. So the for tonight's discussion, the, the local road and safeway plan will focus on the corridor of Dutton Avenue um, from West 3rd Street to West College Avenue. Improvements being considered along, these, along this corridor will include bike lanes, lane reductions, and pedestrian enhancements. Uh, we will get into the details in the presentation, but this is where we're looking for feedback from our community. Uh, for example, when we're looking at various roadway design options, we want to hear from you on the issues with the existing conditions, if our design addresses those concerns, or if there are concerns with the proposed designs that we have. Looking at the timeframes, we are very far out ahead of any implementation for this road, for any roadway improvements along this section of Dutton Avenue. Um, we have already had a local uh, safety road meeting for Montgomery Drive and 4th Street. That was back on February 2nd. And our intent for tonight's meeting is to get feedback on, on Dutton Avenue. 
and on our initial design and on our initial design. Um, we will follow up with an online survey to capture any additional community input. And then we'll reach back to the community in late summer and, or early fall with a final design. We are already looking for uh, funding options and grants to implement this project, but we don't have funding secured yet. So at this time, I'm going to introduce Catherine Kleinschmidt. She's the project manager consultant for GHD. Catherine will present the data and the potential options for the improvements for the roadway corridor along Dutton Avenue, looking at data-driven collision analysis, roadway connectivity obstacles that were identified in our uh, pedestrian and bicycle master plan. Following her presentation, we'll open up the meeting for comments, questions, and concerns for the public. And there will be also be some information on how you can send in your comments online electronically. Catherine. Thank you, Rob. Next slide, please. All right, my name is Catherine Kleinschmidt. I'm with GHD and I'll be presenting the local road safety plan focusing on the North Dutton Avenue corridor. We're looking at it from West College down to West Third. You'll see the website link there as well as a QR code. We'll get into some of the de details later on in the presentation, how to leave feedback through the survey and the interactive map. Um, but we do want to present these options to you for your feedback and input. Next slide, please. Overall agenda for today is we're gonna go into the background of the program. What is a local road safety plan as well as the bicycle and pedestrian master plan for the city of Santa Rosa that's been adopted and those vision and goals and how this plan is complementing that bicycle and pedestrian master plan, as well as the data analysis. As Rob mentioned, it's a data-driven uh, uh, process. So we'll look at the collision data and we'll look at the proposed countermeasures looking at the current conditions, as well as what we're looking at to propose as an improvement and getting your feedback on. And then we'll follow up with the other E's. Um, not only are we looking at engineering countermeasures, but education, enforcement, emergency response, emerging technologies, uh, but also uh, we're also gonna cover the public engagement with that uh, other items. Next slide, please. Okay, the overall background, next slide. So the city of Santa Rosa did receive a state funded grant to uh, uh, conduct a local road safety plan from Caltrans. Uh, the requirement is due to the federal uh, highway funding that has to go through Caltrans. They have oversight and Caltrans is requiring that each agency for the next cycle that actually is going to be in April 2022 have a plan in place, adoptive plan to be eligible for the HSIP funding. And you can kind of see the overall process wheel there on the uh, lower right hand corner. Next slide, please. Uh, this plan is, is complementing the city's bicycle and pedestrian master plan. Um, there's been a lot of work with this plan and uh, it was updated in 2018. And the vision of this plan is Santa Rosa as a community where walking and bicycling are comfortable and convenient and common for people of all ages and abilities. And how we're gonna get to that vision uh, is with our goals. We're gonna increase access and comfort. We're gonna maintain and expand the network and support a culture of walking and biking. So that's what our local road safety plan is, is complementing this plan in the, uh, that vision and those goals. Next slide, please. So out of that plan, there was different uh, corridors that were identified due to their high injury network. That means they had um, high pedestrian and bicycle collision with higher severity, collision severity on them. Uh, so we really wanna focus on those corridors and bringing down those severe injury type collisions. And North Dutton Avenue, West College of West Third Street was identified in that plan, one that needs to be further uh, examined. Next slide, please. 
So we will have some guiding principles also. We are uh, comp well, our guiding principle is to uh, have a vision zero with this plan. The Sonoma County currently has a vision zero plan they are developing with Sonoma County Transportation Authority. And so that might be an active plan that you might be involved in or aware of. And we're, we're also uh, complementing that plan in you know, understanding that you know, we need to kind of uh, build a system that is forgiving, you know, reducing speeds is, is you know, safe for all users. Um, and it, it's, you know, uh, it, it, we should really strive to prevent fatal and uh, severe injury crashes. Next slide, please. So the other plan that the state has uh, is the California Safe, Ra uh, Safe Roads. That is the Strategic Highway Safety Plan. That also is a data-driven plan, and it focuses on reducing fatal and severe injury collision. And they've identified the five traffic safety E's, so that's why we're complementing those E's with engineering, enforcement, education, emergency uh, services, and emerging technologies. Next slide. Okay, into the data analysis. Next slide. So we did a lot of data analysis. I'm just gonna give you a high level overview of the city. Um, this is looking at uh, 2015 to 2020. And we've got on the left side, the vehicle to vehicle collision. So there's no pedestrian or bicycle collisions. And you can kind of see the trend, um, you know, like kind of from 2015 to 2016, it kind of went up and then it flattened off and then it went down in 2020. But the thing we really want to focus on is the severity of the collisions. And um, when you start comparing the chart on the left to the chart on the right, which is pedestrian to vehicle collision or bicycle to vehicle collisions, you start to see that the severity, the uh, fatalities and severe injuries uh, is higher when you have a bicycle and, and a, a, a pedestrian with a vehicle collision. Um, so we want to really focus on getting those collisions down, um, as well as on the right, you'll see the trend kind of went up and then down, back up and down, but then the severity was still pretty high in 2020, even though there was a significant uh, reduction uh, in the amount of collisions. Next slide, please. So for North Dutton Avenue, this is looking at a five-year window. 2015 to 2019. This is from West College down to West Third Street. Uh, there, we looked at the collisions at the intersections versus the segments, and the majority of the collisions are occurring at the intersections, and that's typical where there's a lot more conflict points between vehicles and other vehicles, between vehicles and cyclists, and vehicles and pedestrians. So we know those are some of those areas we need to focus on, as well as um, there was 89% um, of the intersections, 11% of the, seg uh, the segments, but there were six bicycle collisions and four pedestrian collisions. And the collisions that were at, uh, uh, excuse me, the collision type that was the um, main, uh, uh, you know, the, the leading type was broadside and with the top violation being automobile right away. This is typical for intersection type uh, collisions. Next slide, please. So this map here is showing you a collision density where it, it's, you know, uh, a, a higher color, more red and orange is where there's a higher density. And as I mentioned, there, there's a more concentration of collisions at the intersections. And you can see the collisions at college are concentrated at ninth. Uh, there's also some down there on, uh, uh, on third, as well as some in between places there on eighth. Um, so we're looking at how can we get those collisions down. And then here on the wheel, you can see this is the collision type. The overall collision type for the corridor was broadside. Um, there was also a significant rear end collisions. And then we're seeing that there was four vehicle to pedestrian collisions there. 
the reason the six uh, bicycle to vehicle collisions aren't identified separately is because through the California Vehicle Code, they are considered a vehicle. And so their movements are uh, recorded typically as sideswipe or broadside. Um, so they're within that wheel there. Next slide there. Okay, and then looking at the collision severity, so we do want to focus on reducing the severity of collisions as well. So this is an important slide to see where those collisions are uh, really of high severity are, are occurring. And the um, high severity collisions are, are kind of down there uh, south of college by Kingwood there and also on 9th Street, we've got some severe injury collisions and then one uh, at eight that we'll get into with a the pedestrian. Um, there was uh, no fatals during that five year swath and then there was 21 visible injuries uh, with 42 injury complete of pain. Next slide, please. So looking at the pedestrian to vehicle collisions at eight there, um, so the majority of the collisions for the pedestrians, three of the four collisions were uh, occurred at night, one occurred in the day and the severe injury collision occurred at 8th Street, that's where that uh, crosswalk is with the pedestrian activated beacon. Um, so three were crossing in the crosswalk at an intersection, one was not. So we do want to focus on improving those intersection type crossing treatments. Next slide, please. Evaluating the bicycle to vehicle collisions, we also see a concentration of those at the intersections. Um, 9th Street, uh, there was uh, uh, six collisions in total with four of uh, injury, other visible, and then two complaint of pain. Uh, on the left is showing you a wheel of violations. Um, so there, these could either be the cyclist is cited as uh, the one at fault or the vehicle. Uh, actually, it had a 50-50 split on this one. The wrong side of the road was the cyclist. The traffic signal and signs, I believe, was also the cyclist running the red light, whereas one was the vehicle. Um, so it's, you know, it's good to kind of, you know, really understand some of the, the issues that we might need to look at in kind of providing the accommodations. Next slide, please. Proposed countermeasures. This is what we really need your feedback on. So um, this is the existing conditions. Before I kind of get into this, I just want to kind of explain how we've rotated things because we wanted to make it fit the slide. So we're going to be starting from college and moving down to West 3rd Street on Dutton Avenue. And we've rotated the roadway 90 degrees. So north is kind of um, facing to the west. So, and then this cross section here is um, looking north. So your parking is on your east side there. Um, and so this is just a general, you know, roadway typical section. It might vary in certain areas, but you have um, two travel lanes in each direction with a two-way left turn lane. The travel lanes uh, adjacent to parking on the east side is a little bit narrower. Um, and then you've got some wider sidewalk. The average daily traffic for this segment is around 14,350. Um, uh, Next slide, please. Now, looking at proposed conditions, we want to really um, look at how we can improve safer travel for all, all modes and um, in providing a um, exclusive bike lane, we can look at removing a travel lane in each direction. And this allows a nice wide bike lane with a buffer. This will help provide uh, a higher level of comfort for cyclists, as well as provide a buffer for pedestrians from vehicles. Um, it also helps to slow vehicle speeds as shown the higher severity typically occurs with the higher vehicle speed. So that's another thing we really wanna do when we look at providing safety accommodations. Um, and it, uh, with, you know, the, the um, parking is to remain, so we're still leaving that parking on that east side. Next slide, please. 
So moving south down the corridor, we're still rotated. We're now looking at the section of North Dutton from Saracen Road to West Ninth. Um, we've got a little bit different typical section without the parking. We still have two lanes in each direction with the center two-way left turn lane uh, and a little bit of a shoulder on that uh, east side. Uh, but the average daily traffic is around the same, around 14,350. Next slide, please. The proposed conditions is to continue the bike lanes along this corridor, the buffered bike lanes, and, um, can, and by removing a travel lane in each direction. Um, so we'll continue that typical section south and then um, have a buffer between traffic, a uh, three foot buffer, as well as a uh, center to a left turn lane. Um, and this will help provide obviously a continuous bike lane as well as a, a higher level of comfort for both cyclists and pedestrians. Next slide, please. So going from North Dutton Avenue from West 9th Street to Trowbridge Street, um, we have parking on the opposite uh, side. It'll be on the west side, but two travel lanes in each direction and a two-way left turn lane. Um, the traffic volumes are similar, just a little bit higher, around 15,000, and I would round it up to about 700 vehicles per day. Uh, we do have some crossing treatments um, at the intersection of West 8th Street, as well as uh, Trowbridge Street, as well as on the south side between West 8th and Trowbridge, we do understand there's some discontinuous sidewalk there that, that could be a nice safety improvement to fill in. Um, next slide, please. So, um, We'll look at carrying that typical section uh, through the um, southern section and taking away a lane in each direction and adding a buffered bike lane. Uh, it just changes a little bit with the roadway width. We were working all within the curb lines uh, and then keeping that parking there as well as improving those pedestrian crossings um, with a pedestrian activated rectangular rapid flashing beacon at 8th Street um, and, and you know, update the pavement markings there. Uh, next slide, please. All right, um, moving south along the corridor. Um, this is from Trowbridge Street to Santa Rosa Creek Trail. We know there's a real nice connection to the trail along the creek that kind of comes up to North Dutton. Um, so um, we wanted to kind of capture that as a break point. We've got two lanes in two, uh, each direction with a two-way left turn lane. We've got sidewalk on both sides. Um, also, I wanted to uh, provide some um, update on the trail connection. Currently, the trail only connects on the east side, but the city is at, currently in the planning stage for the west side connection as well and kind of improving the access to North Dutton there. Uh, the traffic volumes are around uh, the same, around 15,700 vehicles per day. Next slide, please. So for proposed conditions, we have a couple options we're looking to get feedback on. Um, the first option is going to be a bike lane with a painted buffer. Um, so you're taking away a travel lane in each direction with a three foot uh, and then providing uh, a two way left turn lane with a travel lane in each direction and a three foot buffer with a seven foot bike lane and then a shoulder there. Um, this will provide a nice facility for cyclists as well as buffer the pedestrians from the vehicles and have a traffic calming effect. But the difference between option one and two is looking at having a, a protected bike lane with a um, delineator or something raised uh, in the buffer uh, that can help to really, you know, kind of provide that level of protection. Um, so it kind of changes a little bit of the widths, but it still provides the same, you know, 
travel lane in each direction with a two-way left turn lane, but you got a little bit of a wider buffer for the delineators that would be placed in there. And then here it says long-term, provide a connection to the trail on the west side is in the planning stages. And I believe I covered that in the last slide. Next slide, please. Okay, for the, the um, southern end, we're looking at uh, looking at the existing condition has two lanes in each direction with a two-way left turn lane and sidewalk on both sides. Um, the ADT is around 15,700 vehicles per day. Next slide, please. So the proposed condition is to really narrow the traffic lanes with the interchange there to Highway 12. We really want to keep the capacity there because it does queue back with the, you know, queuing at that traffic signal. So we're narrowing the travel lanes and um, maintaining that four lane cross section with one lane in each direction, a little bit of a wider outside lane. That'll be good for buses. Um, and then having that center to a left turn lane and then providing that five foot bike lane there adjacent to the sidewalk. Um, so this will help keep the operations at the intersection while still providing a continuous facility for bicyclists all the way through the corridor. Next slide, please. Okay, other items. Next slide, please. As I mentioned earlier, we'll also be looking at non-engineering countermeasures. Not everything can be solved through uh, engineering. We also have to really um, you know, look at some education campaigns. A lot of drivers are distracted, not paying attention, getting some education there, um, as well as we can uh, look at, at safety campaigns for bikes and pets, especially using a light at night. Um, safe routes to school maps and outreach at school. Santa Rosa is doing a great job with that. So just continuing with that, as well as there can be social media blasts with ed uh, quick education tools. Um, and speed management campaigns have become a lot more uh, ramped up recently. I, I know there's a lot of funding going in that direction as well. The city currently has that Keep Kids Alive, Drive 25, but doing some additional campaigns as well as we can partner with the regional partners, uh, Sonoma County Health and Sonoma County Transit Authority. Um, there's a lot of emerging technology too that can help improve safety, um, looking at providing um, the ITS infrastructure, the smart city type practices, bicycle uh, detection at the signals through video detection, getting those controllers updated, or you can get your leading pedestrian intervals where the pedestrians will actually have about a five second leading interval. So they'll have a jump before the vehicles have the right of way so they can kind of establish their right of way in the crosswalk before the vehicles start to go, as well as um, looking at accessible pedestrian signals. Some of those now are touchless when you just wave uh, and changeable message signs, getting the information out to the drivers of any special events or issues that might be on the roadways. Next slide, please. Uh, enforcement, super important, especially with um, speeds. Um, you've got to get you know the police out there or to enforce the different areas that might be of citizen concerns as well as school zones, DUI enforcement. Um, and this can also be, uh, look at distracted driving uh, enforcement, and sometimes it takes increasing the number of traffic enforcement offer, officers through an office uh, traffic safety grant. Other things we want to be sure to always maintain the emergency response access um, to locations. And so uh, always uh, looking at how to increase the access, reduce congestion, shortened response times as well as uh, at the signalized intersection, always having that preemption that they can trigger to get that green light to go through during an emergency. Next slide, please. Okay, so here we are today and March 2nd and um, looking at a public meeting final review, as Rob mentioned, will be somewhat out into the future in September. Um, but we're looking for your feedback and the website is now live uh, and we have a survey. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so this is the website link. If you scan that QR code, you can go directly to it. There's the landing page. It does have a translation feature built into it. And it also is enabled. So if you are currently browsing with a different language, the website should recognize that and ask you to translate it. But if for some reason it does not, you have to hit that Google Translate option on that slide. It's red on that um, box there. And we're looking for comments either through the interactive map. You can leave a driving, transit, bike, pedestrian, or school comment or the survey. Next slide, please. And the survey should be live now. And we're looking for comments uh, through the North Dutton Avenue. And if you would please uh, take the time to fill out the survey, we are gathering all of that information and using that to inform what we are uh, going to be proposing as uh, the future um, uh, accommodations along that roadway. Next slide, please. Okay, with that, that ends the presentation and I'm going to pass that back to Rob. You can go over the contact information. Great, thank you, Catherine. Um, so my contact information is up on the screen currently as is uh, Bjorn, who is our active transportation planner. Feel free to reach out to us at those, um, at those locations or at the telephone numbers provided. Um, at this time, we'd like to hear from you, our community. So we will now move into the question and answer or comment period of the meeting. However, before we begin, I will ask Lauren to review how you can participate and ask live questions or give comments. Thank you, Rob. Once Rob calls for public questions or comments, we will announce for anyone wishing to ask question or comment to raise their hand in Zoom. For individuals participating in the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. We will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hand raised. Your microphone will be unmuted so you may ask your question. Once you have raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, your hand will be lowered and your microphone muted so our panelists may respond to your question. Great, thanks, Shelley. Are we ready for our first meeting attendee to ask a question? Yes, we are. Thank you, Rob. Uh, as a reminder, if you have your, if you need to have your question translated, please let us know once you've been called on, and then allow us a moment to confirm the translator is ready. Remember to speak a little slower so the translation team can relay your question. Again, if you're wishing to speak, please raise your hand by using the Zoom raise hand feature. If you are asking your question through the Q&A, the questions will be read at the end if they have not already been answered, and then Rob will respond to your question. So the first person we have in the queue is Alexa. Alexa, we're gonna ask you to unmute. Your mic is going to unmute it. Go ahead and state your name if you so choose. Hi, my name is Alexa Forrester, um, and I just want to say, first of all, thank you. This is a really clear presentation, very well articulated, and I'm very excited about these proposed changes. They will make a big difference to my family and I um, as we try to navigate the city on our bikes. Um, I have a, just a couple pieces of feedback, um, and I realize that there's like always the challenge of balancing the different users interests and preferences but as someone who rides on my bicycle with my kids I would prefer to have the bicycle lane right next to the sidewalk and then have a buffer and then have the parking and again I realize that that is you know the the, the probably the people parking their cars want to be right next to the sidewalk but um you know, my experience, I actually live over on uh, more on the southeast near Hoenn and the recent restriping there has been really great on that road with the buffer there. Um, but half the time I'm on the road, a delivery van or, a, you know, somebody who's parking is blocking the bicycle lane as I'm trying to ride that way. And so putting the bike lane right next to the sidewalk prevents that kind of incursion into the bicycle space. Um, the other thing I would mention is if you are preserving parking there, and I know this might be a long way until we do this project because of the lack of funding right now, but 
interrupting the parking occasionally to kick out the sidewalk to allow for tree plantings that will help provide shade for cyclists and also pedestrians without stealing any space from them would be a suggestion. And then the one other like criticism I would have of the plan is just that last section. I know you're trying to like deal with a big traffic load there at 12, but I was riding home from Taco Tuesday last night with a nine-year-old and I would not let her ride on that section as you've designed it. And so you've created this really nice corridor for people of all ages. And in that last second, you squeeze the, the, the bikes out. So I'm wondering if you could potentially remove one of those traffic lanes in one direction or the other, whichever would have the, you know, the lesser impact for traffic flow um, so that you could preserve the buffered bike lane through there. That would just be a, a consideration I'd throw on the table. Otherwise, thank you for all this really great work. I'm so excited to see these changes in the works for Santa Rosa. Great, thank you, Alexa. Um, I appreciate your comments and they're very well articulated. We'll look at the capacity issue at that intersection. Um, and, 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 it, and it is a balance and I know it's, it's a struggle. Um, one of the things that we, you know, we try to do is, so I'm just turn off the light, is we try to, uh, we want to keep this, the, the vehicles out of the neighborhoods as much as possible. And the more backups there are on our arterial streets, the more cars start to weave their way through neighborhoods because they think it's going to be a faster route. And, um, and one of the ways for us to help avoid that is to try to provide to keep the capacity at the intersections where we want to keep the cars um, so that we we don't impact the neighborhoods. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, we will look at to see if um, we can accommodate um, a removal of a lane there. I, I am a little bit hesitant, but we'll take a look at it and see if, it, if the numbers work out. Thank you. Thank you. Our next um, hand is Chris. Chris, we're gonna ask you to unmute. Hi there, this is Chris Eggers from Santa Rosa. And I first of all wanna say, I'm really impressed with all the thought and planning that went into this. Um, there's some really uh, great improvements. I'm particularly heartened by the uh, uh, suggestion of a physical barrier between the bike lanes and the roads. And I know the master bike plan uh, calls for um, comfortable and convenient biking for all. And I can say um, with confidence that most families um, and children would not ride on a bike lane that isn't protected from that kind of traffic. And I would like to suggest that the entire corridor there be protected by something vertical so people are more confident to use it. Um, the other comment I have is I ride uh, down Dutton uh, quite frequently myself, and it's a pretty scary proposition right now. At 9th Street, I can see why there are collisions there. Um, I have to make a left turn on 9th going south, and um, the, there's four lanes and a turn lane, and I have to navigate all four of those lanes to get across the street there. And it takes time to do that. It's extremely dangerous. I'm a, I'm a pretty skilled bike rider, but there needs to be some way to get across that street uh, at that point for people who wanna go left on 9th, cause that's a pretty well-used bike route to go under the freeway to the east side of town. So um, uh, comment there. And on my last comment was that um, I see that there's um, going to be some accessible signals for pedestrians. I would like to see accessible signals for bicyclists as well, so we don't have to get off our bikes and march up the sidewalk and go to the, the turn signal and then hit the turn signal. So um, it would be nice to see some accessible signals as well. But this is really um, heartening. I, I think we're headed in the right direction. And um, thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Our next hand is Eris. Eris, you'll be asked to unmute. Go ahead. Um, hi, I'm, I'm gonna uh, steal Chris's accessibility word uh, to just talk about this meeting. Um, I, I have hearing loss and uh, would love if it would be routine for public meetings to have the captioning turned on. Uh, it's an automatic feature in Zoom. 
Um, you've got interpretation for Spanish speakers, but Shelly, I can barely hear you, uh, even with everything turned up. And Rob, you're kind of quiet too, but I've been able to hear all of the public speakers quite well. So um, I'm not sure what's going on on your end technically, but if you had the captioning, I would be able to um, catch some of the things that I'm missing. Um, but now on to the, um, the plan, um, I echo the, the concerns and suggestions um, from both Alexa and Chris. And um, another one, actually one of them may have already said, I was just curious as to why, uh, you know, I support all of the, the removing um, traffic lanes to put in buffered bike lanes, but only one segment did you have uh, an actual physical barrier um, in the buffer and the other ones were all just the paint buffers. And, you know, we all know paint is not magic. And uh, while the, the buffered bike lanes, which I love right on the ones on E Street, uh, it, it serves the purpose of making the bike lane wider so you have a little more room to maneuver, um, but it doesn't actually keep cars from hitting you. Um, so I would agree with um, adding vertical elements in those buffered bike lanes wherever possible. And let's see, did I have another comment? I think that was it. Thank you. Thanks, Eris. And, Thank you. Uh, and as you were speaking, actually, I was going through my head thinking about the layout of the street. And I, I know there are locations where we do have parking, which we couldn't put in the vertical elements, but potentially on the other side of the streets along those same segments, we could put in the vertical elements. Um, where we don't have parking in, in, as an obstruction. Um, so we'll, we are definitely look into those, um, those comments that you and Chris and Alexa made. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Justin, we're going to go ahead and ask you to unmute. It's not letting me do that. I'm going to, I'm sorry, we're going to have to come back to you. Bonnie, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Oh, great. Uh, thank you for a, a great presentation. And uh, I am a Santa Rosa native. I've, my family's had property over here all my life. So I'm quite familiar with this part of town and I live on Trowbridge Street. Um, I really appreciate this and I know it will be for the wider population unpopular to consider um, narrowing Dutton, but it is horrible in terms of the speeds. And many times I have tried to cross Dutton uh, at Trowbridge using the pedestrian light and people still don't stop. So anything you can do to improve that um, situation to improve the, the crosswalk lights uh, is also appreciated. And I, I like the idea of, um, I, don't, I don't know what you call it, leading pedestrian uh, intervals at the lights. I, I have a job now where I go to San Francisco and I drive a lot. And I am amazed at what San Francisco has done. They have made tremendous infrastructure changes on their roads, showing real commitment to reducing uh, collisions with bicycles and pedestrians. Takes some getting used to, but it's very, very effective. And so uh, I, I appreciate anything that we can do here to try to also save lives and make it safer to use alternative means of transportation. So uh, thank you, I really support your idea and I'll um, go ahead and fill out your survey. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Bonnie. Okay, our next one is Terry. Terry, can you hear us? I'm here. Go ahead. Thank you, Terry. So I'd like to talk about crosswalks. I'm a pedestrian, almost always. And I run into places like the crosswalk at uh, West 8th and College. And if I'm on the south side of West 8th, I have to cross West, or, yeah, West 8th then cross college in the crosswalk and then cross West 8th again on the other side. So I have to cross three streets in order to cross one because there's not a painted crosswalk. 
And I, like somebody said, paint isn't the solution, but it does sometimes make people more aware that that is a crossing point. Thank you, Terry. Okay, great. Thanks, Terry. Okay, Justin, we're going to go ahead and try that again. One moment. Can you hear us? Yeah, I, I think it's working now. Is it working? Yes, thank you. Yeah, I've got an old version of uh, Zoom on my computer that I don't know how to update, so I have to log in through a uh, browser and then it works, but I forgot. Um, anyway, my name is Justin Borton. That was my explanation of why my mute button didn't work. Um, thank you for this presentation. Uh, I just want to uh, take a moment to um, advocate for the raised buffers um, along pretty much every bike route in Santa Rosa. I mean, I have a gut feeling that bike lanes reduce uh, incidents of injuries, but do not promote a feeling of safety from cyclists. Um, I'm a cyclist myself. I have four children. I mean, there's no way I would let my kids ride on Dutton uh, with no raised buffer, with no actual protection. Um, and I do not think if, if a goal is to get more people on bicycles, um, while I do think that this plan would probably make it somewhat safer, I don't think it will achieve the goal of getting more people onto bicycles because I don't think they will perceive that it is safe, i.e. I don't think it's a low stress solution. I think only having a raised buffer is going to get people to feel like they are safe riding around Santa Rosa. Um, I wanna echo what has been said also that I'm from New York City originally, riding between cars and parked cars. I mean, there's always that fear that someone's gonna throw a door open, that someone's gonna dive into a parking spot. I mean, it is just not a very safe feeling. Um, the only way is to put you next to the sidewalk and then to have a raised buffer there. And then, yeah, also that section between the Creek Trail and Third Street, like, I mean, that is critical, right? Like Third Street is such a major artery. Um, and to get people off of Third Street, I, which I assume, you know, you want to do and get people over to the Creek Trail, having that be the least uh, accommodating for a cyclist just seems like a bummer of a plan. Um, so, you know, perhaps if you can reduce it down to one lane, even going, what, I guess north, so away from 12, which is like less likely to get backed up on that side, I presume, um, so that you can have some buffered, raised buffers there um, to get people over to the creek trail would be critical. Um, I know I ride Third Street quite a bit, and uh, uh, I live over by Oliver Stony Point. I don't know if I mentioned that already, but to get downtown, I typically take Third Street. I don't take the Creek Trail um, because, you know, riding fast on the Creek Trail also has its problems. The Creek Trail gets impacted as well with just people trying to enjoy a little exercise. So, but Third Street is not safe either. And even just cutting over to that Creek Trail from Third on Stony Point or Dutton or wherever it is, is a, a harrowing experience. So um, yeah, I think that's all I had to say. So thanks for taking my comment and thanks for coming back to me uh, a second time. Great, thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. Okay, now we have Elizabeth. Elizabeth, can we hear you? Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. Um, I have a number of comments. The first is that I don't ride my bike on Dutton a whole lot, but I did last weekend. My first exposure to Dutton, however, was probably, or where I have felt most at risk was about a year ago when I decided to take the car into a new car shop and was, you know, trying to drive slowly, find the correct driveway, figure out which of the many, you know, sort of nondescript buildings was the correct one to turn into. And Dutton is a high stress place to drive because traffic is moving so fast. And then knowing that you need to slow down sort of unexpectedly and worrying you might get rear-ended while you're preparing to turn left across traffic. I love the idea of a road diet here and of having a left turn lane. That just makes the whole 
prospect of going over there in a car even less stressful. Um, that said, I tend to get around town more on my bike. And so I have in no particular order a set of things. Um, recently, I've had experiences elsewhere in town where I have been unable to turn uh, to trigger a light, whether to turn left or to go straight. And so I want to make sure that there's a good plan for ensuring that cyclists are able to trigger the lights at every intersection along through this route. Um, so I think it was Chris who mentioned having some, whether it's actual a signal you can just wave your hand at, which is probably better confirmation than wondering, am I positioned over the correct portion of the pavement? So that seems like one good idea to consider. Um, then just a general observation about these road diets that the city is considering for a number of places around town. We have inherited very wide roads and are in the process of trying to fix this with road diets, but then we're still stuck with these really wide roads that don't provide drivers with the correct cues about an appropriate speed. So some of this can be fixed with engineering like raised buffers to protect cyclists and other non-drivers, but I'm wondering what else can be done to provide the correct cues to drivers about an appropriate speed. I think maybe Alexa's idea of bulb outs that help narrow crossing distance for pedestrians also has the potential to provide drivers with that sense of, oh, maybe this is a place where I should go a little bit slower. Um, so I don't know what, el what else can be done. This is an engineering challenge that I'm sure a lot of cities face and I'd love to hear and see options and possibilities in future plans about how to use engineering and not rely just so much on enforcement to get traffic speeds down. Um, then I really like the section of buffered bike lane and I second the criticism from folks who would love to see more of the lane along here buffered. And as just, Justin mentioned, would it be possible to make the section from Third Street up to the Santa Rosa Creek Trail a single lane northbound, two lanes southbound, thereby creating enough room to cr continue the buffer through that section. Um, I think it's especially important in that stretch as cars are coming off of 12 and are still in the drivers are still making that transition to realizing that they're driving on city streets. That in some, in some ways was actually one of the most harrowing sections to ride on last weekend when I cruised along through there on Sunday afternoon because cars were really flying along through those curves. Um, and then the last thing is I was looking at Google Maps and satellite images as we talked and noticed that there are some gaps in the sidewalk on the west side of Dutton, both south of 9th Street and south of 8th Street. And let's go ahead and dream big. Can we get uh, closing those sidewalk gaps rolled into this project? We can see people walk through there because the Google satellite imagery shows a worn path through the grass just south of 9th. So we know there's demand um, and it would be great to get those sidewalk gaps closed. And that's all, thank you. Great, thanks Elizabeth. Thank you. Mark, we'll have you go next. Let's see. I think you have an old version too, Mark. Hold on, let me try this again. Yeah, it's saying you have an older version, Mark. Um, maybe you can type your question in for us and I can get to that in just a sec, okay? Kevin, we'll go ahead and have you on mute. Hi friends, uh, Kevin Anderson here, West End resident, a utility cyclist that is uh, frequently riding um, all over the area, but certainly Dutton is, is a place that I ride almost daily. Um, yeah, I think most, most of the comments have already been uh, touched upon, so I, I appreciate the depth of, of this group. Um, one of the things though that I think would be, would be awesome, I guess a couple things, the creek path at Dutton um, is definitely really, really tough. Um, there are, I mean, if we're, we're doing road improvements here, making it easy to um, get on and off the creek path both sides seems to me like a no brainer. Um, right now, you can only access it on the east side um, in one place. Um, there are some place making efforts that have been done by. I think unsheltered and also just local residents that want have wanted to access the dirt side. And so there is an unofficial entrance there as well. Um, but I think that would be certainly, we're talking about both bikes and pedestrians, very helpful to just 
find a way to connect all four corners, if that makes sense. Um, and then finally, I, I do see um, some people mentioned the things that have been done in the city. I unofficially call it the West End Wiggle. Um, San Francisco has a wiggle that goes through um, some of the uh, easy places from market to uh, the panhandle so you avoid some hills, but there's definitely an area I see cyclists do this all the time, myself included, cross um, near Trowbridge at that um, the light there, and then head across that crosswalk and then come through the west end. So I think making it, um, marking it, of course, with, with actual um, wayfinding signs um, could could help. Um, and I think that would be would be a really nice one. And then finally, just thinking out loud here in terms of listening to the group um, with two lanes going south and one going north, that might allow um, some creative solutions to get on and off the creek route. Um, again, you know, you, you guys are the engineers, but I think there, there, are, there has been done in ways where you have cyclists that are able to go both directions. Um, so it's just a couple of those thoughts. I, I don't know. I know Rob, you've been great um, working with certain groups, painting crosswalks. I don't think this is a candidate just because of the amount of traffic. It's the paint's not going to stay, um, but there might be other ways um, on parallel streets to, again, um, just promote, uh, you know, th through through bi bicycling traffic, alternative routes. I'm not saying don't go Dutton, but I also know, um, God, if we can ever get the smart path going, we might never leave the smart path. Um, that's all I have for now. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Great. Thanks, Kevin. I, I did want to comment on the um, creek. I think I think you understood that we are we do have a project to add um, the creek access on the northwest quadrant of the creek. Um, and it sounds like you were mentioning um, also adding to the south unpaved side as well. And I, I'm not sure if we do have right of way to do that. Um, That'd be something we'd have to look at. I know we do have a project for the north side, though, so I just wanted to comment on that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Monica. We're going to go ahead and ask you to unmute. Oh, Monica, you also have an old version, and we can't unmute you. If you could type your question for us, that'd be great. Um, so we do I have. See, a oh, I say yeah. I see. Mark is on there. I don't know if he got a new version and came back, or if he's still. Uh, Mark, hand. I'm not seeing it. I don't see a hand, but I see but his. He has a question. Name. So his question is this: If the goal is safety, we have we have to have an equal emphasis on enforcement. The presentation is overwhelming, bike, bike, bike. But without fixing the dearth of enforcement, the speeding will continue. The U-turns on either side of the Crown on the North Dutton Bridge over Santa Rosa Creek, using the turn lane as a 500 drive aisle, et cetera, would we have the collision numbers and severity of injuries if we had enforcement of our current layout? It's a great question, Mark. Um, I don't have, so the answer I have for you, I don't know if, if we had increased um, enforcement, I'm not sure if that would entirely solve the issue. Um, but I do know that in locations where we have installed road diets, um, and we we have lessened the uh, amount of collisions. Uh, Hohen is a great example of that, where we have um, reduced the amount of collisions uh, by a, a great deal by installing this this type of um, this type of roadway, it, and it does reduce the speeds. So by virtue of being having one car in front of you versus uh, Two lanes where you can choose to, you know, go around a car who may be driving slower than you want, but maybe they're driving the speed limit. If you're stuck behind the car that's driving the speed limit, you're stuck behind the car that's driving the speed limit. So um, it only takes one person to drive the speed limit along the street to basically hold everyone at the speed limit. Where when you have two lanes in each direction, it it provides an opportunity to go around that person or to race that person, etc. So at locations where we've done this and those locations include Calistoga Road, um, Mission, Yolanda, Petaloom Hill Road, uh, Hohen, Summerfield, Bethards. Um, we have seen reduction in speeds. Um, so that is a positive with this, this type of installation. 
Thank you. Uh, Mark has another question, but I'm going to go ahead and move to Bonnie's question. She okay. said from the presentation, please clarify broadside. What is it? So a broadside collision is a collision that occurs when one vehicle is um, traveling in you know, a particular direction and another vehicle hits it at a 90 degree um, impact. So it would be hitting the side of a vehicle um, with the front of a car or, or the side of a bike or side of a pedestrian. So any of those would be considered broadside collisions. Thanks, Rob. So Mark's next um, comment is, we could do enforcement without a capital improvement program. I support safety and upgrades. Last, that queue from West Third prevents us from leaving from Hewitt now. If we reduce a lane, the queue will be even longer. Right, and that's, that's the reason why we are keeping the capacity in that section or the goal is to keep the capacity at that section in the southbound direction um, so we are not impacting the queue that's already lengthy at that at, at times a day at that location um, and the reason for that is because we are challenged with the interaction of the of the interchange with caltrans um, and highway 12 so those ramps are also impacted and um, Caltrans does their best to keep the ramps clear from backing up onto the freeway, which causes another type of uh, very high severity collision if, if vehicles back up onto the freeway and get rear-ended versus if they are on a, a city street and um, it's a much lower collision, lower speed collision. So I understand, I understand your point of view and I understand the backups that do occur there. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we don't want to uh, reduce the capacity of that southbound direction at that location because we don't want that queue to reach further back than it currently already does. Thanks, Rob. Our next comment is from Monica. She says, hi, I live on North Dutton Avenue, specifically at West 8th Corner. I see many people walking past my house and love this neighborhood. I wanted to echo there is no sidewalk in front of my house, and I see several wheelchair and stroller users have accessible accessibility to crosswalks and bus stops. Okay, and then Bonnie's comment is, the interchange is a problem. I wonder if there's a plan to make Stony Point Road the main north-south artery to the west side of town. That off-ramp has a bit more capacity. So those are our comments. Yeah, Stony Point does carry quite a bit more traffic than Dutton currently does, um, I th almost almost double the amount. So it is a higher use um, section of roadway for sure. Okay, and Elizabeth has her hand up one more time. Okay, and I also have an email to read once. Okay, and then, then we'll have another one after Elizabeth. Elizabeth, okay. go ahead. Thanks, and listening to the conversation, I have two more thoughts. One is, Getting on and off the Santa Rosa Creek Trail right now is actually slightly awkward. It's like um, you have to go up a driveway. So if you're trying to get onto the trail, you have to slow down quite a bit so that you hit it at a sufficiently right angle and don't you know, instead fall off or um, take it too fast and you've been lazy and you've got low pressure tires and give yourself a pinch flat. It'd be great if that just felt like, oh, this is a natural extension of the road. I can turn here. I don't, it's not like I'm entering a driveway. And then same concept for coming off. Um, just to have it feel more naturally like you're just merging onto the next bit of bikeway. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is I couldn't fully understand the comment about sound like people, someone remarked that the people are turning big U-turns because the road is so wide. I'm wondering if to help solve that problem and also the problem of drivers perceiving the road is very wide, it would be possible in stretches of the um, middle turn lane that aren't close to actual turns to put a raised median in in places to both deter that bad behavior, behavior and also make the road feel a little bit narrower for drivers. Thanks, Elizabeth. Um, so yeah, that would be something we would definitely have to run through our, our fire department. Um, they are comfortable with having a two-way left turn lane because that gives them a very uh, good response lane when they're um, responding to emergencies. Um, vehicles can get out of the way and and they could use that center turn line. Um, when it's a median, they would prefer to have extra room so cars could get 
out of the way even more. And if you know if we have the the buffer, the lane with the vertical element, they they lose that ability. So I think there's points where we have to pick and choose what feature we would want to allow there to, to make sure that we're accommodating all the needs of the different um, uh, the different users, including our emergency response, which is very important. Thanks, Rob. We have Anita. Anita, let's go ahead and speak. Hi, I just wanted to say first, uh, thanks for both of you for um, addressing this issue and your presentation and hearing our comments. We just appreciate the, the attention to detail on that and giving us an opportunity to, to chime in, <laughs> which I just wanted to um, add my voice to the group of people who have commented before me saying how um, I would prefer to have the, the bike lane um, next to the sidewalk, um, and then the raised barrier as well. Uh, I, I live off of West Steel and I work uh, off of Hearn Avenue. And so I, I've, I've been wanting to ride my bike down to, to work at some point, and I'm just terrified of riding down um, Dutton at this point, just because of yeah, the speed of the traffic. And I think if we brought it down to the one lane, it would yeah calm the traffic as well. I figure if people want to get you know, go north or south fast, they can hop on the freeway and the Dutton corridor should be more for, um, you know, people that are <clears throat> moving slower and, and, and more pedestrian and bike friendly. So I just wanted to say, I hope, I hope that happens. Thank you. Okay, Rob, we have a final comment from Mark. And as a reminder for the rest of the panelists, the um, Question, comments, and concerns. Contact information is on the screen if you'd like to further your conversation or share more comments with Robert Bjorn. So Mark's comment is people traveling north on North Dutton who can't turn west onto Alexander because of the queue, pass the queue, and then you turn on either side of the bridge to get a place in line or to park along the east curb of Alexander Apartments. Got it. I, I understand what you're saying, Mark. And we have no other speakers at this time. Okay, I'm going to read an email that we received. Um, so there's two questions. One is, what, if any, are the plans to address the dangerously excessive speeding? There are many that drive at speeds as if they're on the freeway. So one of the things that I mentioned prior was um, by reducing it to a single lane in each direction, you when we're narrowing the roadway and to, that tends to help people drive slower. The other thing that we're doing is um, if there's one person who's going slow, then everyone who's behind them has to go slow. And, and that's shown to be a, a great asset. The other thing I wanted to mention is, is with pedestrian crossings as well, it, the same thing holds true. Um, when you have multiple lanes and a pedestrian crossing, you will need basically all four lanes to stop for you as a pedestrian with the two lanes and the center turn lane, typically it's just the through traffic that's there um, that are going at a higher speed. The left turn, turn lanes are typically going slower. Um, and so you need one person to stop for you in that first line of queue and then people behind them will stop. So you don't have what's called a multi-threat uh, collision uh, with a pedestrian. That's where one car stops, the car behind them doesn't know why they're stopping and they go around them and then the pedestrian is in the crosswalk right there. And sometimes um, they're not able to stop in time. Um, the second question I wanted that was asked was, uh, when will the city address the lack of structurally safe approaching West 9th and lack of sidewalk on the corner of North Dutton and West 9th along the vacant lot? It's not up to ADA standards. There have been numerous times when individuals on wheelchairs have to ride on the street where it's not safe. So I know the location that's, uh, there is a location on West 9th Street, I believe on the Northwest corner where there's a building that goes right up to the edge of the sidewalk and there is not a current uh, sidewalk at that location. I believe that's the location that's being, this, that's being asked about. about. Um, we, I don't know if we have room to put sidewalk in there. Um, we have to, we'll have to look at that closer. The south side there, if that's the location that's being um, discussed, is that would typically be done with the development of the of the site. When a development goes in, sidewalk is typically um, installed. 
However, as part of this project, if we identify locations that are in need of sidewalk, then we could definitely look to include those um, if we have the available right of way to install the sidewalk. So those are locations that we'll mark down as um, potential locations for sidewalk. So thank you for that question. And that is the email that I had. Are there any more questions? We have no further questions at this time. Great. Well, with no further questions, I would like to express my appreciation and thank the members of the public, the panelists, the interpreters, and the hosts for participating tonight. We appreciate you taking the time to listen to us and to provide your input on the local road safety plan. As mentioned earlier in the meeting, in addition to your participation in the meeting, we'd like you to visit the project website um, listed on the screen and take our short survey and provide your feedback on the interactive map. We appreciate your participation in tonight's meeting. Uh, we hope you can join us again later when later in the year when we go over there and discuss the final recommendations for the project. And I hope you enjoy your evening. Thank you and good night.